Scotland will kick off next summer's Euro 2024 finals against the hosts, Germany, in the opening match of the tournament. England have been given what looks like a favourable draw against Serbia, Denmark and Slovenia, while Wales will face two former European champions if they can make it through the playoffs. Well, let's go live to Hamburg now and join our reporter Geraint Hughes for all the details. Hello, Geraint. Let's start with Euro 2020 finalists England. Gareth Southgate surely would be happy with that draw. I think he, he wasn't conceding a, a smile. I think there is a you know, there is a humility to Gareth Southgate and a and a respectful nature. And I think he knows that you know any team that's qualified for these Euros is going to be decent. But I think he's happy with that group. Uh, I, I think that's that's fair to say with the the group he's got there. Look, it came out in in Group C. He's got Serbia, Denmark, and Slovenia sides. If you're a neutral, if you're not nervous, you would think that England should have certainly the beating of or get the job done. Remember, it's about getting out the group, of course, isn't it? Uh, let's quickly go through those fixtures for you. You can see them on your screen now. We've got Sir England will kick off their campaign uh, against Serbia June the 16th in Gelsenkirchen. Then four days later, they go to Frankfurt and it's against Denmark. Kasper Hillman, uh, the Danish manager, glowing, speaking about England, saying they are one of the, not just one of the favourites, they are the favourites uh, to win the Euros as well. And they'll finish off the group stage campaign uh, against Slovenia on June the 25th. They'll play that one uh, in Cologne. So they, they're getting around the country, as all the nations are, uh, for the Euros next summer. But I think Gareth Southgate pleased with that draw and also pleased as well. They've avoided Italy because they're in pot four, but also no home nation this time round. They're great games, I have to say. Um, they are really great games, and for the fans, they of course have that additional appeal. Um, but look, they're, they're both good football teams in the end. That's that's the biggest thing. And um, obviously, Wales, you know, Rob's still got a couple of stages to go. But Steve's you know, done a brilliant job with Scotland to get them where they are. Um, you know, I think he'll be looking at that group thinking that's possible to get through. Um, so, yeah, in terms of the quality of, of what they are, you'd, you'd rather not play them. But in terms of the local derby element, they're, they're brilliant games to be a part of. So England in Group C, Scotland in Group A. And what an occasion for them kicking the tournament off against the hosts, Germany. Yeah, there, there, were, there were audible gasps throughout this huge auditorium. Uh, it's, a, it's a concert hall here in Hamburg. Obviously, they're the auditorium where the draw is being made, but there are so many ante rooms around there. And when that first fixture came out, uh, there were audible gasps, lots of smiles, obviously from the German media who were here in great numbers as well, but also from people who are here for, for, for Scotland as well. So, you know, Scotland, Germany, that, that opening game as well, but Switzerland and Hungary, their fixtures as well. You know, they come thick and fast in the group stages. So they kick off the tournament as they did at France 19 when they played Brazil uh, in the Stade de France in Paris there. But this time it's against Germany in Munich on June the 14th. Five days later, they go to Cologne to face Switzerland and then they end uh, the group stages uh, against Hungary June the 23rd for that one, Stuttgart as well. So the Tartan Army will be here in force. And just a reminder as well, Steve Clark really, really looking forward to the influence of the Tartan Army as well. But that opening game, June the 14th, Germany the hosts in their own backyard kicking off against Scotland. Steve Clark, he's sometimes a man of few words, but I got something out of him on that opening game. Yeah, it should be a good occasion, but for us, we've got to make sure it's not about the occasion, it's about the match, and make sure that we turn up and play as well as we can play. And in terms of um, the opening game of any tournament, often can sometimes be a, can be a bit of an upset there, Steve. Yeah, well, hopefully, hopefully it is this time. Just on the, on, the, on the other groups, uh, the other teams in the group as well. Switzerland, back in Euro '96, victory for Scotland. I know we're going back to different generations. But how do you feel about those two? Yeah, <laughs> it's a long way away. How do you feel about uh, about those teams and picking up points against those teams? No, it's good. Listen, all the matches in the group will be competitive. It'll be a tough group, and we look forward to the the challenge. Now, Geraint, Wales, of course, still needing to navigate through the playoffs. But who could be waiting for them next summer if they prevail? Yes, uh, Rob Page and the chief executive of the FAW were here. All the, the, the teams 
who are in those playoffs next March were here in Hamper because they potentially could be one of the three playoff winners to get uh, to Germany next summer. And what a group Wales have got. Group D, the Netherlands, France and Austria. I think you alluded to the fact you've got two previous winners of the European Championships there in, 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 uh, in France and the, the Netherlands as well. Um, the fixtures for Wales as well, they begin June the 16th. They go to Hamburg. They are back here in Hamburg on June the 16th if they get through the playoffs. Then it's the Netherlands. Then it's Austria up next on June the 21st. They go to Berlin for that one. And if they get, and I'm saying if a lot here, if they get to the Euros next summer, they'll finish their campaign in Dortmund June the 25th against France. I think it's the WOW group, or it's often penned the group of death. Uh, I, I didn't really need to ask Rob Page about what he thought about the group. He knows it's a good, tough one. Here's his thoughts on having to face France, the Netherlands and Austria if Wales can navigate the playoffs and get to the Euros and join England and Scotland. First and foremost, we've got to get there. We've got to, we've got to show everybody that respect and we've got to get there. And, um, and if we have got there, then great. We've, we've proven in recent months, Garrett, that we can compete against Croatia, we can compete against Turkey, who top the group. So, great. It's, uh, that's why we're in the game. We want to play against the top teams. That's why we got promoted from B to A. We want to play against the, the Hollands of the world and, and the Belgians and, you know, and, and Poland who potentially might be facing in the final if, we, if we're successful and they're successful in the playoffs. So, that's why we're in it. We want to play against the best teams and they absolutely fall into that category. Gareth Southgate, Steve Clark, Rob Page probably don't care too much about the razzmatazz of draws like this, the glitz and the glamour. They just want to know who they're going to play at the Euros next summer. They now know that. And the planning, the preparation, it's already begun, but they can plan and prepare in a different way, knowing their opponents. So for Wales, they've got the playoffs uh, in March next year against uh, Finland. If they win that, it's Poland or Estonia. For England, they've got some friendlies already lined up in, in March as well. Same as Scotland as well. Then there'll be another opportunity for a, probably a couple of games in June. I think from England's perspective, they're looking one at home back in England and one on the road before they come to Germany as well. So all those things they've got to work on. And then I think they said as well, the number of times I heard managers today talk about, I hope our players are fit and healthy come next June as well. They just want all those players to play in what a tournament. Let's not forget, crowds are going to be back here in abundance and they're going to be able to travel from around Europe easily. They're going to be in great numbers. It was a challenge at the last World Cup in Qatar. It was a challenge at the last Euros as Europe was coming out gently, slowly out of the COVID pandemic as well. So there's a real feeling about fans being involved in this Euros as well. But the planning preparations for Messrs Southgate Clark and Rob Page, that really starts now. Now they know the draw. Oh, it really feels real now, doesn't it, Geraint? Thanks very much. So let's have a look then at the draw in full. Let's start in Group A, Scotland's group. Uh, group B looks the toughest, containing three times champions Spain, as well as Albania, Croatia and the reigning champions Italy. Group C, uh, England's group, as we've been through. Uh, let's look at Group D, another tough-looking group. As we've seen, Wales could be in that one with France and the Netherlands should they make it through those playoffs. Group E contains Belgium, Romania, Slovakia and another of the playoff winners. And finally, Group F, Portugal, Turkey. Portugal with the only 100% record in qualifying. Uh, Turkey, the Czech Republic and another of those teams from the playoffs.